Hey friend, welcome to Grounded, the vestibular podcast. I'm Dr. Madison Oak, aka the Vertigo Doctor. I am the vestibular physical therapist who is here to help you with all things dizziness, imbalance, and vertigo. In this podcast, we explore the fascinating world of vestibular disorders. Come with me as we dive headfirst into a journey to discover the mysteries of the brain, the inner ear, and the balance mechanisms that keep us grounded. Whether you've been managing dizziness for one day or 25 years, we're going to get real about what it takes to manage dizziness, handle the anxiety cycle, and thrive, not just survive, with your vestibular disorder. First, I want to remind you that this is never medical advice. Remember, this podcast is for informational purposes only and may not be the best fit for you in your personal situation. It shall not be construed as medical advice. The information and education provided here is not intended or implied to supplement or replace professional medical treatment advice and or diagnosis. Always check with your own physician, medical professionals, and healthcare team before trying or implementing any information found here. Meet me in your coziest chair while we navigate the highs and lows, the twists and turns of the vestibular universe. Welcome to Grounded. Let's dive in. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to Grounded. Today, we are going to be talking about vestibular migraine. What is it and how do we know we have it? And then, of course, I will do a follow-up episode on how to treat it. I have Tugboat with me again today, which I know I keep swearing I'll never do, but he is uh, getting more behaved, so we'll see. If you don't know who I am, my name is Dr. Madison Oak. I'm a vestibular physical therapist. I'm here to help you with all things dizziness, imbalance, and vertigo. And my very favorite thing to treat and help manage is vestibular migraine. Vestibular migraine is a complex neurological disorder. That means it's not a necess- it is technically classified under a headache disorder, but it doesn't actually need to cause head pain, which is a very, very incredibly common misconception. So vestibular migraine is a migraine disorder, which again is a complex neurological disorder which comes from migraine. The root cause of migraine is a genetic predisposition to migraine. Now, I know for a lot of people, they're like, but the root cause is X, Y, Z thing. And those are things that we are going to be addressing at the Vestibular Virtual Summit. Like, for example, um, trauma can make migraine worse. What else can make migraine worse? Mold can make migraine worse or trigger... uh, migraine to happen in the first place. Lyme disease can, vestibular neuritis can, all of these different things can trigger it or make it worse. And when we're talking about vestibular migraine, we need to remember that the, again, the root cause of migraine is a genetic predisposition to migraine. This is not your fault. This is not something you did wrong. You haven't done something to deserve this. It is so common. Almost 3% of the adult United States population, that's almost 7 million people, have vestibular migraine. You are not alone. Now, a lot of people have been told that they have Meniere's disease or vestibular neuritis or triple PD or it's just anxiety or whatever. That's not to say you don't have those things, but a lot of times those things are misdiagnoses of vestibular migraine. For example, the prevalence of Meniere's disease, I think, is like 0.2%, whereas the prevalence of vestibular migraine is 3%. So 0.2 versus 3. That is a lot more people and a lot more likely to be VM than Meniere's disease. That being said, 50% of people with Meniere's disease have both Meniere's and vestibular migraine. And I would argue it's maybe even more than that. Uh, Three times more women are affected than men. 50% of migraine sufferers or people living with migraine is actually the way I prefer to say that. I think adding the word sufferer has a negative connotation. Uh, People with migraine, 50% are undiagnosed. And 15% of the world population has migraine symptoms in general. And I do think that that goes goes up 
every single year as more and more people recognize what they have. Hopefully the stigma is going down, all of the things. Now, what we need to know about migraine is it comes in five phases. Now, that being said, you do not necessarily have to always experience every single phase, and also it can be chronic. Vestibular migraine is not always just acute symptoms, or sometimes this happens and sometimes I don't feel it. Uh, For some people, that is true, but migraine is a spectrum disorder meaning the symptoms look different for everyone, how it presents looks different for everyone, the time in which it presents, the chronicity, or if it's episodic, all of these things look different for everyone. And we want to be really privy to that. There are specific diagnostic criteria. You can find these online pretty easily. They are A through D. A is at least five episodes of vestibular symptoms of moderate or severe intensity lasting five minutes to 72 hours. Current B is current or previous history of migraine with or without aura according to the ICHD, which is the International Classification of Headache Disorders Classifications. One or more migraine features with at least 50% of vestibular episodes. So you're having these episodes that are vestibular in nature. It could be anything from feeling like you're walking through the floor on a trampoline to room spinning vertigo. All of those are vestibular symptoms. So that plus a migraine symptom. Headache is one of those symptoms. So it could be head pain that is unilateral pulsing or throbbing, moderate or severe intensity, aggravated by routine physical activity, or photophobia and phonophobia. So that's light sensitivity and sound sensitivity, or visual aura. And then, of course, not better accounted for by another diagnosis. And of course, these di- these criteria, I will specifically say, are not inclusive enough of everyone. Not everyone fits in this perfect box. So if you're like, I kind of fit that, but not this, and I don't really fit the Meniere's criteria of room spinning vertigo for 20 minutes to 12 hours, but I do fit this and not that, you probably have vestibular migraine. It is the most common neurological cause of dizziness and vertigo. It is almost as common as BPPV. It is so incredibly common. I cannot even tell you. The only thing causing dizziness and vertigo more common is BPPV. So again, we have those diagnostic criteria. It's on a threshold and we have a bucket of triggers basically. And your job as a person who lives with vestibular migraine is to build yourself a bigger bucket. Now, the person to see would ultimately and hopefully be a headache specialist in order to help you. But even then, I find because of the funky nature of vestibular disorders, they don't necessarily always treat vestibular migraine, which can be really, really, really frustrating. And that is why I invented Vestibular Group Fit so that you can have a place where all the things that you need to manage and feel better with vestibular migraine are in one place at one time. I'm not saying for you to ditch your neurologist or never see them again or anything like that. But what I am saying is that people will walk their dog around the block for the first time again after being dizzy every day for the last six months and not be dizzy. People say my first month here and I've learned more here than I have in eight years of seeing my doctor go to Disney World again, drive through new countries, like someone moved from Australia to Spain who was a member and started driving on the other side of the street. Someone specifically says, just wanted to say vestibular group fit has really changed my life for the better. I'm shocked how much my symptoms have improved in such a short time. I'm very thankful for you. I think this was like three weeks or four weeks after she joined. Things get better. Things turn around. You just need the tools to manage it. The tools are different for everyone, and this is kind of where things get funky for some people because some people are going to need an SSRI or a medication. Other people might react poorly to that. Some people might want a medication for, I don't know, let's say a CGRP type medication. There is just no best option. And so people get really frustrated. So it's a lot of trial and error. And all the things you need to do, both medication and not medication, 
are trial and error. So it's your job to say, hey, this time I'm going to try X thing. I'm going to try sleeping better. I'm going to try improving the quality of my diet. I'm going to try uh, drinking more water and having some electrolytes. I'm going to try supplements. I'm going to do all the things. And slowly but surely, the things will start to get better. And it's not like you'll start sleeping and then all of a sudden every single one of your symptoms will go away and you're like, okay, I'm never going to feel dizzy again. That's not the intention of treatment of migraine, unfortunately. The intention behind treatment of migraine is to help you reduce the frequency and intensity of migraine. And that goes for medication, that goes for sleep schedules, that goes for all the other holistic things that you need to do in order to manage migraine, not just the medication. And at your doctor, they will likely tell you how to manage migraine from a medication perspective. And I think a lot of people get mad at their doctor because of this, because they're like, well, they only told me to like, take this drug. Like they told me to take effects or amitriptyline or nortripline or topamax or topiramate or literally any of them, Galadia, Jovi, Amovic, I can just list them off. He told me or she told me to take this medication and I'll be fine. And I took it and I either didn't feel better or I felt a little bit better, but they didn't tell me how to change my diet or what to do. Medical doctors don't go to school to tell you how to change your diet. A dietitian does. And then people will say to me, well, they didn't teach me how to exercise or tell me that I need to be exercising. The people who went to school for exercise are us physical therapists. So we need to remember that you need a whole team of providers in order to help you with this. Now, of course, in vestibular group fit, I have broken down every, literally every single thing you need to know. There are over 900 videos for you to learn from, from how to pace and exercise, how to pace your day to how to have a different morning routine to how to think about dizziness. Like literally everything you need to know about managing dizziness is in there. You just need to apply it to your life and it takes time. You need to go slowly. People say, how long until I will ever see a result? And the answer is, it's going to be a minute. It's not going to be overnight. Even medications don't work overnight. We usually need to give them like three or more months to see if they're working for us. So why would anything else be any different? It's not. So what you want to focus on, what you want to think about is, what are the most sustainable changes that I can make to my day-to-day -day life in order to help me live better, be healthier? Uh, have fewer attacks, things like that. Everything from detoxing your life, which of course we're talking about the vestibular virtual summit. And we also have two videos about that in uh, vestibular group fit to how do I exercise again? How do I go to the grocery store? How do I do an airport trip? How do I go to a restaurant? How do I return to church? All of those how to's are in there. All of the things that you want to do and be able to do. This is like my brain on a platter. And a lot of people will say, how do I see you one-on-one? -on -one? And a lot of the times the answer is you don't need to because all of my brain is already in vestibular group fit. It's searchable. You can find it. And truly it is preventative for migraine attacks. People, their attack days go down, their dizziness goes down. And it even has been shown in a lot of people to reduce or completely get rid of triple PD from people's lives. So it really is a phenomenal program. I'm really, really proud of it. If you cannot tell the thing, the little thing that I've built, that's actually not so little. And it's something that can and will change your life forever with the vestibular disorder when you do it. So again, sign up. It's at the link below. Use code grounded for 15% off. And I, what I want you to do is get better at managing your migraine because when you manage your migraine, you manage the dizziness. And this is something that I think there's a lot of uh, miscommunication or misunderstanding about, maybe not for you, but for a lot of people is people say, well, I want to get rid of the dizziness. Like, I don't care about my migraine. I want to get rid of the dizziness. And the reason you should care about your migraine is because worsening migraine is driving the worsening dizziness. The worse your migraine gets, the worse the triple PD gets, the worse the chronic dizziness gets, the worse all these things get. So you actually want to start at the source of treating the migraine in order to treat everything else because the migraine itself is ultimately what's causing the dizziness. And then our response to the dizziness drives the dizziness to get worse. So I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions about that, you can always DM me on Instagram um, at the Vertigo Doctor, and I'm more than happy to help you with that. 
The other thing that I wanted to say is the rhetoric in which we speak about migraine also matters. So a lot of people will say migraines with the with the letter S at the end. Uh, and the migraine con- community generally is trying to veer away from this language. And that is because the word migraines implies that I have a sequential number of headaches or attacks of sorts that are singular standing attacks, whereas migraine is a chronic neurological disorder that you live with. It lives in your brain all the time and presents itself in attacks. So the attacks will come and go, but you always have vestibular migraine. You always have a migraine disorder, if that makes sense. And so instead of saying my migraines or I have a migraine, it's uh preferred at this point, and maybe you know this already, maybe you don't, uh, to say, I'm having a migraine attack. I have migraine, the disease. This can be compared to if you have asthma, you're not having asthmas. You're living with asthma all the time. I will have an asthma attack sometimes, but I'm not having asthmas. And the same thing goes for epilepsy. I'm having seizures, which is a distinct word from epilepsy. I'm not having epilepsies, if that makes sense. So hopefully all of these things answer some questions. I do want to remind you that there is chronic vestibular migraine and episodic vestibular migraine. Episodic is when you have less than 15 days with migraine per month, and chronic is greater than 15 days per month. And this changes the drugs that you might use, the pathophysiology of headache, and other dizziness issues. It changes a lot of things knowing that. So before you go to a doctor, I really recommend that you think about the things that may be affecting you um, and how many days they might be affecting you. Another little hack to know if you have vestibular migraine is that they're usually, they as in the doctor, um, are usually going to ask you how your headaches are, but you can kind of cross that out on the waiver and put dizziness and then write in dizziness. I see that happen a lot, especially in headache clinics, which is where vestibular migraine is treated despite the incorrect naming of it. And then that can be really frustrating. So everyone's toolkit, I'm going to do a really quick toolkit overview. I think I have a whole separate uh, podcast episode on this. And we talk about this every single day, pretty much in vestibular group fit in the uh, chat room. But you need maybe a preventative medication. Almost everyone needs an acute medication and then some rescue medications. There are differences, which we can go further into either on another episode, but we have talks about this in group as well, but acutes and rescues. And then other tools in your toolbox are going to be things like magnesium, ginger, electrolytes, water, earplugs, head uh, headbands or headphones, Migraine glasses like Avalux, use code VertigoDoc at checkout for a discount. Avalux are the only ones that work, um, that are clinically proven to work. Uh, neuromodulation devices like Cephaly, GammaCore, Truvaga, and Nerivio, Salon Paws patches, Peppermint Oil, Tiger Balm, uh, Relief Bands, uh, Blisslets, Neck Massagers, Ice Packs, Heating Packs. Uh, the Allay lamp, people really like the Flux app or irisTech.co, which is for computer screens to make them not blink as much. Weighted or heated blankets or both. Baseball caps. Did I already say earplugs? Yes, I did. Fidget toys, stress balls, dark room tent snacks, ice roller distraction, grounding, breathing, and a preventative breathing schedule. All of these things are your friend. Use trial and error to figure out what works for you and what might not work for you and go from there because there is no one perfect solution to this. It is all about figuring out, hey, I am Maddie, what works for me? I am John Doe, what works for me? I am XYZ and what works for me? And that is truly what I want you to know about yourself because at the end of the day, the amount of control that you can and will have over your dizziness, over your vestibular disorder will absolutely skyrocket when you can say, instead of what did I do wrong? I'm so awful, blah, 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 blah. 
how do I never do that again to what are the things that I can add to my lifestyle in order to make this easier to manage and hey, I know I'm having an attack today. I did nothing wrong, but here are the things that I do to help. Everything changes when you change that. And again, I am here one-on-one and in vestibular group fit as always to help you with this exact thing. I love you and I will see you next time on Grounded. Thank you.